So I take this opportunity to introduce Ms. Shaila Krishnamurti, who will be hosting this masterclass today, which is titled Mind, you, Mind Your Mind and Unwind. Shaila is a dynamic leader who has worked in leadership roles across multiple business sectors in India and international markets. She has worked in diverse and multicultural geographies in some of the globally renowned organizations. She is a certified master NLP coach and trainer, a certified life coach, executive and leadership coach, wellness coach and peak performance coach, also certified in accelerated learning and Ericksonian hypnosis techniques. She has been working on people welfare since her childhood and college days, where she was actively engaged with women-based NGOs, schools, colleges, corporates, communities of orphanages, old age homes by teaching dance and music and involving people in various behavioral activities, which help them in improving their mental and physical health. Subsequently, during her corporate journey in India and abroad, she has been involved especially in counseling, and mentoring women towards better and mental health and professional success in various organizations that, she's, that she has worked with. Additionally, she's been actively involved in CSR activities related to women welfare, primarily related to mental health of the women in various sections of the society in schools, colleges, and for homemakers. Through her company, Twam Way, her current work with women involves improving the psychological and physical health of women through various workshops, one-on-ones, and group coaching. Her workshops are targeted towards homemakers, working women, young girls who play different roles and juggle with their personal and professional lives. She has years of experience in the technical field and has an innate urge to help women move into the niche areas of IT, telecom, IT security, and business continuity. She has taken a resolve to help them gain skills in the aforesight areas through the, through the subsidiary business stream from this of her company, Twamway. She works with women who are willing to start or restart their career and also women who are into or want to get into the technical field to make a niche based for themselves in different domains. Today's masterclass, will help you organize and simplify your mind and we'll talk about state management introduction to nlp so over to you now so in case we have some ground rules for our master class we request all participants to keep themselves muted and if you have any questions take it at the end thanks a lot uh, for that warm welcome and that introduction charnita yes. hello okay. everyone hope all of you are doing well and uh, good afternoon to everyone. So, um, yeah, uh, Sharnita has already, uh, you know, given quite a good introduction uh, about myself and my company. I will um, uh, quickly share my presentation and then I'll just start off with it. Okay. Um, as you've already uh, heard from Sharnita, our company is called uh, Twambe Global Services. Uh, we uh, are a group of like-minded uh, professionals and we share a common vision and a mission of making a difference to uh, the people and uh, businesses. We take them through a transformational journey. So we have two different streams, uh, people transformation as well as uh, business transformation. And we help them uh, their journey towards uh, well-being, success, fulfillment, and uh, to have a very uh, joyful, to enjoy a joyful process throughout their journey. Uh, why we named our company Thwamve? is because Twam is a Sanskrit word and in Sanskrit Twam means you or self and way is our English word way. Uh, way is your transformational journey towards uh, well-being, success, fulfillment and joy, blissfulness. So these are our core values uh, that we have which you will which you are uh, viewing on the screen and uh, we will help you to be a better you. So uh, about me, uh, I think uh, Sharnita has uh, covered quite a bit. Uh, so uh, I have worked in India as well as abroad in different, uh, across multicultural uh, geographies, across different business sectors. Um, throughout my journey, wherever I've worked, whether it is uh, India or abroad, I've had the privilege to work with different kinds of people, uh, different sectors of people, with different cultures. 
uh, what their understanding is about life, about business, uh, how they live their life, how they continue their journey, uh, be it their personal journey or their professional journey. Uh, so this, uh, you know, helped me quite a lot to understand these uh, nuances of life, nuances of people. And since I've always been uh, involved with, uh, you know, uh, people welfare and well-being from my childhood days, uh, uh, it was easier for me and it was very interesting. And uh, I got all the more inquisitive to understand these nuances. And I took up a lot of um, uh, certifications and courses to understand it even more. And I continued uh, my journey throughout. Um, even during my visits to India or when, wherever I worked uh, abroad, I've always, uh, you know, continued conducting uh, the group coaching sessions or workshops or, uh, you know, just visit some of the communities and spend time with them and uh, help them and, you know, understand these basic things and, uh, you know, do some of the activities that will help them to achieve whatever they're willing to do. Uh, so uh, that's uh, that's the reason we also came up with our company Thwamwe, and uh, we will continue to do so. We conduct a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, and uh, workshops, both online as well as uh, 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 classroom workshops. And uh, you can get in touch with me. Um, my details will be shown later. So let's uh, move on uh, to the presentation with today's topic: Mind your mind and unwind now what is mind your mind um we all have heard and followed through the years to mind your step mind your language mind your manners mind your own business but what is mind your mind have we ever thought about you know these aspects at all uh, maybe sometimes yes sometimes not uh, if you can just have a look at the picture on the right uh, there are two kinds of being mindful. One is keeping your mind full with a lot of things. I'm sure everybody will be doing 101 things throughout the day, day in and day out, right? Uh, keep your mind cluttered with a lot of things, which in turn causes a lot of stress, a lot of health issues, you know, unhappiness. There is one more thing, being mindful, M-I-N-D-F-U-L, if you can have a look at the picture. When you say mindful, that is to be in the present, to live in the present. So when we talk about mind your mind, there are two aspects that come into picture. One is being self-aware. By being self-aware, I mean being aware of your thoughts, your emotions, and all the corresponding responses and reactions and actions. And all of these could be either nonverbal or verbal or your physiological patterns and behaviors. Um, just for your information, you know, I I'll try to cover as much as possible in this uh, uh, given time, which is one hour. Um, OK, to move on, we have uh, five kinds of uh, senses. One is uh, visual what we see, auditory is what we hear, kinesthetic is what we feel, olfactory is what we smell, gustatory is what we taste. Now, using all these uh, uh, senses, it's easy for us to be aware of ourselves, of our surroundings, and respond better to situations, respond better to the people around us, or the situations we are in. So this is the meaning of being self-aware. Uh, it is a process, but if we consciously follow this, it will be easier for us to be self-aware. That is using all our senses in the right way. And if we become more aware, our life will become more manageable and it starts to flow. Now the next important point is living in the present. That is being mindful. Now, um, we spend our whole lives planning what's going to happen next, not minding that all we have is only our present. Uh, we are either lost in the past and we are depressed, or um, you know sometimes we get caught up so much in future that we forget how to live. We should all know that we have this life, and if we let it slip away, there is no going back. 
so it's important for us to live in the present now the second important point that we'll be learning today is to unwind now how important it is to unwind what is unwind so when we talk about unwind there are different uh, kinds of you know or uh, kinds to unwind yourselves because each person is unique all of us have different ways to unwind to relax to uh, loosen up to slow down to rest or to de-stress ourselves uh, some people are interested in sports some people are interested in art some people are interested in music dance or just spending some fun time with your loved ones uh, with your kids right or just going out for a walk there are lot of different ways to de-stress but what happens when we de-stress when we relax when we unwind this will help us to unplug and recharge ourselves both mentally and physically and refocus on the zillion things that we have and need to do in our lives um okay personally i have followed this uh, but before following these things i have also uh, had a zillion of things to do even now i have uh but still i made it easier for me by following these steps and uh, if it has helped me and all the other women who are associated with me and my company i am sure it's going to help you as well okay so what i realized was uh you know we we are all responsible for ourselves our life our dreams our learnings our failures our success but uh, what we'll be learning today uh, i hope you it will change your perspective as well Uh, about your present life and if it does uh, trust me you will be thanking yourself for taking this very first step to be a better you so as the uh, you know statement goes there it is all about finding calm in the chaos uh, moving on to the next slide what we'll be achieving today we'll be learning how to organize and simplify your mind uh that will help us to declutter and refocus we'll be learning some powerful techniques to help you manage your state to focus be productive be efficient and feel blissful joyful and we we'll learn about something called as flow state what is flow state how to achieve it and what are the benefits of a flow state we'll be learning of a very very interesting and very important topic that is state management and i will also be introducing you to some of the humanistic techniques as well as a uh, neuro linguistic programming model uh, and our framework our thumb ways framework is based on these two models the humanistic as well as neuro linguistic programming um now throughout uh, the slides whatever uh, we'll be learning right now uh, you will be learning very different concepts and techniques from both these models that we follow both humanistic as well as uh, neuro linguistic programming and then in the end i'm going to give a uh, a bit more of explanation about the humanistic techniques as well as uh, nlp the neuro linguistic programming so you will be able to connect the uh, pieces okay and it it's going to help you so moving on see first let's understand what is mind clutter why should we understand mind clutter what is mind clutter it's important to understand the root cause of a problem and then it will be easy for us to find and apply any solution to it right so uh, firstly let's understand what is mind clutter now most of our body functions are automatic functions uh, for example when we breathe we hardly pay attention to our breathing uh, the blood moves automatically through our veins in our body and we are hardly aware of its movement so now thinking is also to a large extent an automatic continuous activity okay um how are these thoughts formed let me give you a quick example i'll be spending a bit more time on this uh, uh, slide so that you understand what is mind clutter and how it happens and it will be easy for you to apply the solutions to this so now um let's take an example of a baby babies are mystical beings if you have seen a baby 
uh, it just keeps its eye open. The pupils are open and bright and it just absorbs everything around it using its senses. And now what happens is for a baby, only the unconscious mind is developed. And through this unconscious mind, it is able to accept the information. So through unconscious mind, you can only accept information. And now the baby grows, it becomes a toddler. And then slowly, when the conscious mind develops, it starts coming in, then the toddler starts to accept as well as reject the information that it is absorbing. That is when you will start the kids, you know, talking about, no, this is not mine. This is not me. I don't want this. I don't want that. And this kind of accepting and rejecting information and also filtering the information that you accept inside your mind. These things will go on throughout our lives. Why? Because we are not only using our unconscious mind. Unconscious mind is only 10%. Of what we use we use 90% of our conscious mind where we accept the information where we try to filter the information have our own internal representation and when I talk about filtering the information we would have already had some kind of memory some kind of belief some kind of value systems memory um, using all this we try to filter the information give it our own internal representation and then that turns into state and then that comes out as a verbal, non-verbal communication, and then a physiological patterns and behaviors. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tiring process, but understand what goes on in this whole thing. Our mind gets cluttered with a zillion of information and thoughts. The average person has uh, 60 to 70,000 thoughts each day. And if we don't learn to organize them, they definitely have the potential to impact on our product productivity, our creativity, and our efficiency. So when we kind of give in to these immense amount of thoughts running through uh, our head, our mind becomes disorganized. And uh, the more we kind of concentrate on all of these uh, intrusive thoughts that come to our mind, the more power we give them and our mind becomes cluttered. Sometimes most of our thoughts are, uh, you know, just thoughts. It is not even facts, but they keep coming in. They keep coming in one after the other, one after the other. So what happens is uh, this kind of disorganized mind, this kind of cluttered mind, it leads to high stress. It leads to uh, negativity. It needs to. It leads to chronic, chronic uh, illness, impulsivity. And a lot of health problems, including weight gain, heart disease, sleep problems, headaches, and a lot of things. And uh, some of the other things, you know, I can go on with the list, how our mind gets affected. So what happens is when we lose this ability to deal with things, to, uh, uh, you know, to understand how to manage these things, we forget the bigger picture of life we forget our goals we forget our values we stand for so it is important for us to firstly understand why our mind gets cluttered how it gets cluttered like you can see uh, on the screen these thoughts come in and through these thoughts all our emotions start building up and there are various factors feeding onto this like our home our household chores our families, friends, health, finances, uh, you know, uh, if you're working, your office, your career growth, meetings, deadlines, a lot of things, competition, right? So all of these things will start to clutter our mind. So um, our human brain consumes, uh, you know, 20% of our body's energy and it is recommended not to waste your energy by letting your mind wander into all of these negative thoughts and unproductive thoughts. Uh, I understand it's not easy to control your wandering thoughts, but if you can, then you will be saving a lot of energy and trust me, your life becomes much, much easier. So uh, there is one more thing which I need to mention here is there are two kinds of things which we focus on in life. 
uh, one is focus on things that we do want and focus on things that we do not want okay uh, if you if if i have to take an example uh, just consider your closet you have lot of clothes in your closet even i do i have you know a lot of clothes accessories shoes we 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 women love shopping yeah let's admit to that uh we love shopping we love to you know buy things uh right we our closet is filled with all of these things but every day morning when we open the closet we still don't know what to wear uh but if we organize this closet it's easier for us to decide on what we need to wear and we dress up for that day so if we focus on things that we do want and keep it aside it's easier because i'm sure there'll be heap of things that we actually do not want now the same way in our mind there are things that we really want and there are thoughts that we do not want and of course uh, there is the middleman always which is kind of in between the do want and the do not want kinds let's see how to handle all of these thoughts let's see how to handle and manage the cluttered mind um okay uh, this is a small activity which i will be explaining but i want all of you to have a look at this understand uh how to do this okay and you can do it in your leisure time uh you know because of the time constraint i don't think we'll be able to do this right now but um you know if we have if you will later attend my classroom workshops this is a very very good activity this is called as the wheel of life uh this gives you a helicopter view of your life to bring different dimensions of life back into balance i just i'll just move on so that you'll be able to see it better now we have different dimensions of life okay um by nature we are all made to be in harmony with ourselves our relationships things that we see hear learn accept but what we do is we also kind of end up attaching a meaning to it we respond to it we react to it uh you know we show it in different uh, ways different actions so there are different dimensions of life if you have a look at this wheel of life uh you will see lot of dimensions like self image career finance health uh, friends family uh, love uh, recreation uh, contribution personal growth uh, and spiritual now some of you might also have some other dimension which you need to add into the circle so please go on and make your own wheel of life you can add more dimensions to this okay now you will see the numbers there marked from 0 to 10 what you need to do is you just need to uh rate yourself in each dimension as to where you are currently between the number 0 to 10 0 being the lowest and 10 being the highest so uh this goes on like this the technique you need to rate yourself where you are currently with respect to each dimension of your life that is mentioned here and once you do that you will be getting an overview of where you are currently with respect to each dimension of your life whether you are on low whether you are on too high whether you are in between right it will be easy for you to rate yourself this way now um, see it's not necessary that only if you are high on everything you know you're kind of balanced because uh, uh, you know sometimes too high that is something which is impossible we cannot reach uh, a 10 in everything uh, let's be practical about it um but there are certain things where uh, you know high is also not good low is also not good so you can just be realistic about where you are currently and then rate yourself now the next thing you need to do is okay once you rate yourself uh, and mark yourself the numbers on these dimensions just connect the dots so that you will get something like a graph uh, you know a line connected to different dots the next thing you need to do is 
you need to again rate yourself with respect to all these dimensions okay considering where you would want to be in future in future i mean it could be short term it could be quarterly it could be half yearly it could be yearly wherever you can plan it according to yourself whatever is convenient for you so i repeat the second thing you will be doing is rating yourself in each dimension of life as to where you would want to see yourself rate yourself mark the dots on each dimension and connect the dots so now you will have uh two different graphs that is shown there which is very very visible to you so that will clearly show you where you are currently with respect to these dimensions of life and where you would want to be okay as per your wish as per uh, you know the next 3 months or next month however you want to rate it this is very important because this gives you a very very good clarity of what are the things that are there in your life currently what are the different dimensions of life where you're working on where you're managing things how much time you should actually give it how much time you're giving it currently how much of uh, efforts are you giving currently to that particular dimension and how much you should be giving so when you have this understanding it is easy for you to get a clarity of the things that you're doing uh, this is a very very useful technique uh you know which i have also uh, followed uh because uh, let's be honest i'm sure we all have a lot of things to do you know we once we get up in the morning till we go back to bed and even when we are sleeping we have different things to think about and planning for the next day so having this kind of clarity will make it easy for us so let me just move on okay so now that we have understood uh, what is mind clutter we have understood what are the different dimensions of life that we need to cater to and uh, where we are currently where we would want to see ourselves now let's move on to how to organize and simplify our mind so how to declutter our mind and refocus on things that we need to do so self care you can see the picture there very clearly the very first thing here is the rhythm of life uh we call it the rhythm of life because it is about breathing we all breathe agree but we are not aware of our breathing sometimes it's really difficult because when when we are tensed or when we are in a hurry we we just forget to breathe normally you know our heart rate goes high and it's not good for us it's very very important for us to be aware of our breathing and be aware of our energy levels now uh, when you want to uh, you know work on your breathing you there are lot of meditation techniques that you can follow whatever works for you uh, if not just uh follow slow breathing whenever you wake up in the morning maybe 5 to 10 minutes you can just sit in a calm place and just focus on your breathing slow uh, breathe as slowly as possible and this should be enough you don't have to do anything extraordinary just focus on slow breathing so this will actually save a lot of uh, energy for us it will save in a lot of energy and this will uh, stimulate your brain and it strengthens your brain activity and it boosts your uh, overall attention span and it will also help you to focus better uh, it will give you um, better response time uh, you can give assertive responses it reduces your anxiety manages your strength uh, sorry uh, your stress and it also helps you to calm down calm your uh, mind which is very very important this way your energy levels are also maintained the next important point is uh, taking control of your emotions now how do we do this uh, what is it exactly um, while it's really impossible to uh, control uh, you know how things make you feel uh, you still have complete control over how you react to your emotions isn't it 
so uh, first we need to be kind of uh, honest with ourselves and uh, you know understand what we are feeling uh, and why you're feeling it and then it's easier for us to uh, channel this emotion into um, different behaviors or uh, different kinds of reactions that we give sometimes what happens is um, when we associate certain words to our emotions it's easier uh, for us to understand how it makes us feel inside and our emotions will become less mysterious to us so we can associate words with it and um, there is a very nice uh, technique here which uh, i would like to just quickly mention um there's a way you can kind of write down your uh, uh, you know negative thoughts if you're maintaining a journal or you can just take a pen and paper or maintain a book instead of writing down everything anything and everything whatever comes to your mind just keep all your positive thoughts to yourself you know just keep it stored it in your uh, brain and just write down only the negative thoughts that comes to your mind now what you're trying to do is uh, this is a very nice technique which will help you to uh, uh, you know consolidate all your negative thoughts put it on paper put it in writing and uh you can even crumble that paper and throw it in the trash or just keep it away when you do certain things by action you're actually sending the signal to your brain and uh, you know the study says our brain is uh, capable of our brain is designed to uh, store only positive thoughts it is not designed to store negative thoughts but what we do is we try to stuff our brain with a lot of negative things so there's a very nice uh, technique which you can follow it's uh, called negative flutter technique you can just write down all your negative thoughts on a paper you can crumble it tear it into pieces put in a trash or uh, you know just keep it aside so that you don't want to have a look at it or maybe sometimes you would want to have a look at it and see how you feel at that point in time or what best can you do about it if not you can just keep it away uh, this is definitely going to Uh, help you to take control of your emotions and um if you address to this uh it will be very helpful for you it will help you to relax uh figure out what is exactly behind your emotion and how you should be moving forward with it the third important point is uh, prioritizing your thoughts and your corresponding actions uh when we talk about prioritizing the very first thing that comes to our mind is making a to do list now you will have again zillion of things to do all the physical activities and everything and you will also have lot of thoughts coming in how do we prioritize it there's a saying which says um you know eat your frog that is focus on the most important task and try to finish it don't leave it at the last minute we all try to procrastinate uh, you know such kind of task till the last minute that is when we get really really stressed so please eat your frog that means focus on the most important task and try to finish it and yes making a to do list also helps like you know ticking one by one uh, all of the things that you need to do probably in a day's work or if you have you know a time planned or something and uh, this in a way also gives you a very very satisfied feeling that you have closed a task and it will become habitual actually so this will also help you to organize now moving on there's a very um, important and very useful uh, point which is here it is okay to let go why is it okay to let go now uh, if you take an example of a computer of you know if the cpu's memory is uh, 100% what happens the computer crashes or your phone memory is full your phone crashes the same thing is applicable to humans the same thing is applicable to us so we should kind of you know stop wondering what if uh what if i had done this what if i had done that what if this had happened to me you know we will be we are actually unnecessarily torturing ourselves pondering on the possibilities and uh, you know what if i change the way uh, i did this or that 
So sometimes it is just okay to let go if it is not working for you. If it does not work for you also, please consider it as a lesson learned from that experience and do not have any regrets. This I'm all saying, uh, you know, based on my personal experiences, how I have uh, lived my life, how I have gone through some of the, you know, roller coaster rides in my life and how I applied these things on myself and how it has helped me and where I am today. So uh, these are the things which you need to consider for yourself. Taking care of yourself is the most important thing, the utmost, you know, important thing. Now, this next uh, point is physical nurturing. That is eat right, exercise right. I'm sure you would have heard this uh, like a million of times, millions of times by your uh, mom or, you know, some of your loved ones. Uh, it boosts your energy levels. You know, it keeps your mind active. You will not feel fatigue. It's very, very important to eat right and exercise right. And uh, it will lead you to a better physique and, you know, you will feel better about your uh, appearance and you will uh, feel confident about yourself. Uh, it will boost your self-esteem. And these are all very, very important things to, you know, declutter your mind. Very easy things, uh, but still we don't uh, cater to it. But if we do, it is going to help us in big, big way. Uh, this will also decrease our stress and it will improve our uh, cognitive uh, functions, um, you know, which means all the, uh, you know, information or the knowledge that we acquire, uh, these things will get stored better, will be in a better position to understand things. So this is a most important uh, point. Uh, next is uh, unplug and recharge. When we say unplug and recharge, mm, I think any kind of system, any kind of gadget you see, it always needs to be unplugged, give it some time, put it back, it's going to work. I'm sure you would have done this with your modem or you know any kind of uh, gadget that you use. Now, the same thing is applicable to human beings. Um, this is really important to disconnect. When I say disconnect, have a time where you just enjoy doing nothing. I really mean nothing. You just have to sit, do nothing, just give that time for yourself. Disconnect from your phone, TV, gadgets. Just do nothing for 10 minutes. Just enjoy that, uh, you know, the, the nothingness that you feel. And then get back, of course, to the things that you need to do. The last and most important thing is to have a good sleep. We all think that, uh, you know, okay, if we do not sleep well, and uh, uh, sorry, I mean, if we use our night uh, times as well and work on things it will be good for us we'll be able to achieve better but good sleep is very very important it reduces stress uh, it improves our memory it you know it makes us alert it uh, makes us lose weight it helps us with our energy levels it relaxes our mind it relaxes our body our uh, mental muscle physical muscle all of it so it's very very important uh, to have a good night sleep so just to quickly move on um, sorry I'm going a little faster uh, with all the slides because uh, we have uh, you know pretty much less time to cover up all these important topics uh, but I'll try to squeeze in as much as information as possible with respect to the concepts and the techniques so to, to quickly move on this is something called as a triad of life mm, this is one of our concepts we call it we call it the three A's to accept, uh, adapt, and be agile. Um, the temporal nature of uh, life is, you know, a lot of situations change. Our lives change. People around us change. Priorities change. Sometimes we feel high, low. Sometimes we feel good. Sometimes we feel bad. Everything around changes. Um, but what happens is, if you're not aware of these things, and, uh, you know, if we don't know how to accept these things, if we don't know how to adapt to the changing, to the changes that happen in our lives, it will be difficult for us. And if we do it, then it's easy for us to acquire more knowledge and wisdom and become stronger. So when I talk about being agile is being alert, taking action, showing flexibility. 
because you will definitely see a lot of changes happening in your life one after the other but we need to learn to accept to adapt and to be agile with it um i've also uh, okay i got some list of things uh, list of challenges that uh, some of you had sent out uh, based on that i've tried to kind of you know squeeze in a few things here and some of the current challenges i saw is uh, like self doubt fear of taking risks losing focus time management uh, self confidence staying positive uh, these are some of the challenges uh, which i uh, received uh, from the women uh, who have logged in today uh, i have quickly kind of you know uh, stated a few uh, effective solutions to it now we all say we need to take care of our body so we need to exercise and we take care of our physical self now there is something called as training your mental muscle so this is like um very very important and a very easy way of doing it so please uh, focus on it you can just concentrate and try to understand the very first thing is emote act as if now what is this if we emote and act okay as if we are confident as if we are brave okay now uh, yeah acting as if uh, study show that you know if you behave like the person you want to become uh, you know it's easy for you to uh, send that signal to the brain and it will activate that part of brain uh you know that part of state in your brain for example um, okay uh, if you feel sad you're you know kind likely to hunch your shoulders avoid eye contact and you know participate less in conversations and that kind of keeps you in a depressive state but if you uh, you know have a smile on your face put your shoulders back uh, started some friendly conversation with someone uh, you know just uh, feel confident this will actually instantly boost your mood this is like reverse engineering so you act as if and then send that signal to your brain which will help you with lot of these challenges that are mentioned here like self doubt or you know confidence or staying positive so to quickly move on next is a mindful magic i think mindful we already di uh, discussed uh, in the earlier slide that is uh, to live in the present next is uh, practicing uh, gratitude i think every day if you can kind of uh, list out three things that you're grateful for for that day uh, it'll also help you to feel better to feel good to count on your uh, blessings right it's it's very uh, important to practice this uh, gratitude then um the last one i've mentioned here of course there are a lot more but i've just squeezed in whatever i could uh, repetitive mental push ups we all have and i'm sure most of you would have done physical push ups but what is mental push ups in our brain we have our right brain and the left brain our left brain is responsible for our logical thinking critical reasoning calculations and all of these stuffs and our right brain is responsible for being uh, creative uh, being you know for for our it's responsible for our emotions for constructing for imagination all of these things sometimes it's important to uh, you know do things in different ways to train our mental muscle like for example if you are taking the same route every day to go to a market why don't you take a different route that day you're activating the neurons in your brain every day you're brushing with your right hand do it with your left hand the next day you're immediately activating the you know other side uh, of your brain so there are a lot of uh, exercises like this which you can do uh, you know you you can even uh, have a look at it on uh, google i'm sure you'll be getting more information on these kind of uh, brain exercises uh, which are good for you so moving on uh, we spoke about flow state now when you follow all of these things like you know uh, simplifying and organizing your mind decluttering your mind you will reach something called as a flow state okay um this is like uh, setting yourself in a autopilot mode now what is this a uh, flow state there is something called as a flow state ritual which you can follow that is again deep breathing being grateful uh, you know for the things that are there in your lives and setting some kind of intention 
for the uh, upcoming day. That's it. So when you practice this flow state ritual, you're already excited about the things that you need to do for that day. And then uh, finding the right amount of challenge in what you do. Sometimes we focus on uh, tasks that are really challenging, focus on tasks that are really skillful. Uh, for some people, uh, you know, the most challenging things work for them better. For some people, the most skillful things works for them better. So if we kind of try to find a balance between these two, you know, the, the midway, then we get into this flow state. If it is too challenging, you know, it gets, uh, I think anxiety comes in, or if it is too skillful, or if it is less skillful, or less challenging, boredom comes in. So we will find a midway and achieve something called as a flow state. And when we are in flow state, it's easy for us to perform and uh, sustain your focus. It's not easy, but it's very important to sustain your focus. I think a uh, study also says that at the max, you can sit and work on a task for 20 minutes. Just try to sustain your focus uh, for the next 20 minutes on whatever you're doing and then take breaks. There is a technique called as uh, Pomodoro technique. Uh, which is like, you know, you just take, um, uh, you just do a task for 20 minutes and take a five minutes break and then repeat the same set four times. And then after four times, you take longer breaks, 15 to 20 minutes of break. So this is a very good technique that you could, which you can follow. You can probably note it down and, uh, you know, check how it works later. And then shifting back your focus is also important following all of the first four steps and then again shifting back your focus uh, onto the flow state. Now, whenever I call a flow state, this is something which you will see. For example, if someone is performing on stage, if there is a dancer performing on stage, you see the dancer completely immersed, you know, uh, in, in the uh, art that he is performing. So that is when you call it as flow state. So now what are the flow state benefits? It's a blissful state of balance and you know being fully immersed in a task it will help you to be completely free from all of your distracting thoughts it enables you to kind of you know enjoy your work and perform at the peak of your uh, potential uh, this is very uh, easy and important now there is something else which i need to mention here is uh, we all think uh, you know multitasking is something that will help us to achieve all the tasks that we need to do. But sometimes uh, we live in a delusion that you know multitasking is going to help us to achieve all of this. It's very important for us to focus on a single task that you have at your hand, finish that, close it, and then move on to the next one. Okay, if you see here, uh, I'm sure we cannot avoid multitasking. So there is a very nice technique uh, called as task closure technique. Uh, this is very easy, actually. So I'll just give you a quick example. There is uh, probably okay, a working mother. She has her baby in her hand. She's running uh, late for work. Uh, you know, she has to carry the what uh, the milk bottle. She has to carry her laptop back. And you know, she's in a hurry and she's getting a phone call. She just goes out and she forgets to lock the door. And then she goes to office and she keeps thinking, have I locked the door? Have I locked the door? Oh God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? I'm sure this has happened with all of us and it still continues, you know, the same way. But there is a very nice technique where you use auditory dialogue. Okay. Like, for example, uh, once you have locked the door, you tell it out low, loud that I have locked the door. When you would say such auditory dialogues, it quickly sends uh, a signal to the brain that this particular task is closed. So this way, it will also help you with the multitasking, okay? Uh, I've mentioned this because this is something which we cannot avoid. That's why I've mentioned the technique as well. So quickly moving on, very important topic, state management. What is state management? Um, your state is always managed by a lot of, uh, you know, things happening around. Interaction between your thinking patterns, your physical well-being, all the neurochemicals, you know, that are produced because of your emotions and other things. There are two kinds of states, resourceful states and unresourceful states. Resourceful states are all those states that you see there, contentment, excitement, satisfaction, confidence. Unresourceful states are like anger, resentment, fear. Now, when you manage your state, 
it is a very important key to becoming highly effective positive productive and creative it will also help you to unplug and recharge there's a very nice technique which i have mentioned here um this is called as visual anchoring technique um connecting your visual stimulus and linking thoughts and emotions to colors can effectively elicit your resourceful state okay now um okay you will see a green spot there now you can kind of connect this color the green color to various kinds of feelings various kinds of states for example it can be a refreshing feeling it can be peaceful or restful uh, or calmness relaxation any color for that matter you can use any color i have just put green color here for now okay uh, what happens is when you focus on a color uh, i don't know if i will quickly explain how to do it uh, we don't have much time to follow it right now what you need to do is just um, look at the green color okay focus on the green color for a minute and when you're focusing on that color just think about a time where you have really felt relaxed it could be your holiday it could be just a walk in the park it could be you know somewhere you've gone out on a beach side or just some kind of uh, time that you've really enjoyed and you have relaxed while focusing at that color you think about that particular have a visual representation of that particular uh, memory that you have think uh, you know you can uh, see what you saw you can hear what you heard you can feel what you felt during that time what you're trying to do is you're trying to link those thoughts and emotions that you which you have felt yeah through a visual stimulus to this particular color so what happens is when you link these kinds of emotions and thoughts to this color whenever you see this color trust me it is going to elicit that kind of resourceful state this is like uh, you know a technique that 100% works with people if you have not understood how to follow it you can write to me or uh, you know whenever i conduct other uh, uh, online workshops or classroom workshops we can do this uh, again this is a very very useful trick technique and it's going to help you uh, wonderfully well it's going to give you 100% results so i'll just quickly repeat focus on the color uh, look at it uh, for a minute while you are looking at it try to link your thoughts and emotions of your memory where you have actually felt relaxed think about those times could be a holiday or you know walk in the park where you have actually felt relaxed that particular resourceful state which you want to be in try to uh, use this visual stimulus and link that thoughts and emotions to this particular color and feel what you felt during that time just see what you saw during that time hear what you heard during that time when you do this whenever you look at this color it will automatically elicit you to that particular resourceful state there's a very very useful technique so uh, to quickly mention a few things that we do uh, as a part of our uh, company what we offer uh, twamve inner management is a very unique program uh, which we conduct uh, these are classroom uh, based uh, workshops uh, as well as online workshops that we do uh, depending on the requirements we either do a one day three day or a five day workshop uh, it, it's going to it's like a holistic workshop where we focus on different aspects of life and uh, you know we help you to find those gaps and uh, help you to work on all your uh, resourceful states that you want to be in it's going to benefit you immensely you know you will become the master of your journey and it's going to work uh, wonderfully well you will be able to rediscover yourself it will help you to you know unleash your inner potential uh, it will help you to make better choices end of the day so when we say be a better you which is also a tagline of our uh, company twamve uh it is all about bettering ourselves you know on a day to day basis right uh even if we say we are best at something still there is a way to better ourselves so with respect to all aspects of life there is a way to make better choices to better ourselves achieve that success and that fulfillment and that kind of contented uh, feeling you know which we need in our lives uh we also uh, i also conduct this neuro linguistic programming uh, uh specifically you know this kind of uh, course that we do uh 
where we also offer the certifications as a neuro linguistic programming uh, practitioner. And this would be either a three day or a five day course uh, that we do. Uh, I think we have already spoken uh, a few concepts here, which are catering to the humanistic techniques that we follow, as well as the neuro linguistic programming uh, techniques. Uh, to know more about it, please do attend uh, you know, my uh, workshops. You will get all the information on our company website. Um, and uh, you can write to me personally. I also conduct one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, group coaching. And in case you, you have a need to talk to me personally as well, please feel free to do so. Uh, that's my email ID. You can write to me as well. You can refer my uh, uh, website. And um, I think we're done. Um, yes. yes. Yeah. Now, any of you have any questions can put it up on chat window. How to avoid or get away with negative responses? Okay. Um, just to answer that in a quick way. Uh, see, if we have to respond to every other thing that comes to us, right, we will always remain in distress. We are responsible for what we are. We are responsible for how we react, how we think. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's easy said and done. But there are certain techniques that which we can use to help us uh, to, you know, work on responding to these uh, negative uh, things that we hear. And uh, due to time constraint, I cannot explain more on that. But uh, please write to me separately and, you know, we can connect and we can discuss about it more. Yeah. And one of the attendees wants to know if you will be sharing the PPT with them. Thank you all for participating and thank you, Ms. Shaila, for a wonderful session and helping us understand that we need to declutter and emphasizing on powerful techniques like focus and, you know, to be productive by prioritizing our thoughts and responding actions. Thank it was a wonderful session. So any of you have any questions can leave your questions even on the event page and we will take it from there. We'll get in touch with you, Shaila, and, you know, we can take it, get them answered somehow. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank yes. you so much. Thanks a lot uh, for this uh, opportunity, uh, Sharnita. Thanks a lot, Jobs, for her. And uh, thank you all uh, for participating in this uh, workshop. Uh, I would just like to say that, you know, if you do not use your mind, your mind will use you. So please make better use of it. Learn how to do it. And you can always uh, please feel free to get back to me. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so and much. Shana. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Yes. And Shana is also a mentor with us. You can follow her page on the jobs for her portal. Yes, thank you very much.